Hello, welcome to our second Star Wars Armada uh, overview, quick overview of uh, one of the new Wave 1 ships. Today we're looking at the Assault Frigate Mark II. Um, those of us who play X-Wing will be aware you always get a nice a nice little leaflet like this with the components inside. So we've got a picture of the ship. One thing I was a bit disappointed with, I thought we might have got another scenario. It's literally just a... It's just this. You, we normally get a... A scenario or a mission when we um, get an expansion with um, X-Wing but obviously maybe early days you know that's let's not grumble the ships are here so let's get let's get cracking um, let's have a look at the actual ship itself first of all here it is okay the first thing I noticed I haven't put the base together guys I'm sorry um, I literally just uh, unboxed it very very quickly one of the things I have noticed um, I actually thought it was going to be whiter. I know that sounds bizarre, but it looked very clean and crisp in some of the photos I'd seen. But I'm actually really happy that it's a bit grittier and a bit more weathered. Um, because all I had to do on my core set was actually um, ink, uh, or sorry, wash my Corvette and my Nebulon B with black ink. Um, black wash, black ink, whatever. Just to give it a bit more of a, a grittier feel. So, no, I'm quite impressed. It's a good size. I think we're going to see some LED conversions for the engine, which would be quite nice. Um, I would love to do it, but I'm just a bit rubbish when it comes to these things. Also, the stand is curved because the connection point is over to the side, so it doesn't damage this wonderful section here. So, that, that's the ship. Okay, we've all seen photos, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to linger too long on that. So yeah, it's a it's a lovely, lovely, lovely uh, ship, and it's going to look good on the on the on the table, facing off, um, you know, against some star destroyers and gladiators. So yeah, so let's that's good. Let's move that out of the way. Oh, I think I've knocked that out of the base there. Let's let's put that back in. Oh, let's just move it out of the way. I'll let it go for a while. Okay, so first things first, you get two ship cards. We get the A and the B. Okay, so that's let's let's concentrate on the A first of all. Okay, so we get six hull, great. We get uh, two anti ship lasers, well, two blue dice, I should say. We get three command, two squadron, four engineering. See, this is quite nice, it's a three command ship, so you know, we're going to feel some of the pain that uh, Imperial players have been going through, you know, that they're having to think three steps ahead, whereas all we really had to do was with the Corvette, it was one step ahead. Um, and with the Nebulon B it was only two, but then if you had layer on your ship, well, anyway. So that's quite nice. Um, obviously we get our evades and everything else here, which is again, good selection. Evade, redirect, um, and I can't remember the other one, which is really bad. I haven't played X-Wing for a while. X-Wing Armada for a while. Um, front, we get four shields, two red, one blue. Obviously, port and starboard. We get three red, one blue. And the rear, we obviously get two shields, two red, one blue. Okay. Now, this is clocking in at a big 81 points. Okay. Well, I'll come to this in a second. Um, speed of three. Not bad. Not bad at all, really. Speed of three. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is quite nice. Um, we obviously have a commander upgrade. The... Let's bring this up nice and close. A weapons team. We have the offensive retrofit, the defensive retrofit, the officer, the title, turbo lasers. So yeah, so it's a, uh, got some good options there. Okay, but obviously coming in at a big 81 points, and that's for the A. The B. Not a lot of change really. Same, exactly the same. Uh, upgrade abilities down here at the bottom. Um, obviously, the biggest changes with the B is it's Squadron Three, whereas on the A it's Squadron Two. Um, four engineering, we, you need four engineering. You, you're going to need it. Um, it's it's going to be required in a big way. Again, it's six hull. Um, again, big you know one change here. Anti-squadron, you know, uh, weapons. It's only one blue, whereas on the A it's two. Um, we've also lost a blue dice on our front arc. Our port and starboard 
are exactly the same. We've also lost the dice of our rear arc, but this does come in at cheaper, uh, nine points cheaper. at 72. Okay, so it's it's tough. You know, fighter squadrons are going to play a big, big part of this game. Um, I know you can only take one third of the total army size um, in squadrons. But if you see my unboxing video, well, it's not an unboxing video, it's an overview of the Rebel Fighter Pack. You know, you can see that there's some great abilities. Um, and it's going to be quite tough. Personally, I'll probably be flying the A, um, just for the more offensive um, abilities, which I think the Rebel the Rebel fleet is uh, requiring in a, in a big way. Okay, so we have that, the A and the B. Boing. Let's push those out of the way. Just, let's see if we can get to the top of the shot. Bam, there they are. Okay, so let's have a quick nose at the upgrade cards. These all fell over, so they're not in any order that you probably would get them in from the pack. Okay, Veteran Captain. When you reveal a command dial, you may discard this card to gain one command token of your choice. Three points. Why do we have an Imperial officer on our Rebel card? Not that, you know, I'm moaning on a Rebel player. I am slightly biased. Sorry, guys. But again, three points, you know, it's a nice get out of dodge card. Okay, we have another officer card, Adar Talon. After you resolve a squadron command, exhaust this card to toggle the activation slider of one squadron activated within that command. Sorry, I had that out of shot there. This is a real, really powerful ability. Only 10 points as well. If you've got somebody like Dutch, who has an ability, which is, look, it's all, in all offensive terms, it's an eye on bloody cannon what that guy can do. He can take out a squadron quite happily out of a fight. Or you give this to Wedge, or Luke, or Kayan, Tycho, you know, any of those named pilots, you're going to cause some trouble. This is um, quite a valuable card. I like that card, obviously, as you can tell. Okay, apologies, I'm probably going to completely mispronounce the surname, but let's give it a go. Garmbel Iblis. At the start of the first round and the fifth round, each friendly ship may gain a number of command tokens equal to its command value. That's quite impressive. That's quite a, you know, that's a good starting ability to have. And also at the end, you know, it, it's only a six turn game, you know, and these games can fly by. Um, if you're not concentrating on your objective, this could be a real help. 25 points though. But it's you know it's quite powerful for what it is. Okay, so that's 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 good, and that's obviously a commander. So what have we got here? We've got the triple X nine turbo lasers. Ironically, under the turbo lasers category, critical hits. The first two damage cards dealt to the defender by this attack are dealt face up. This is nice. You can cause some damage with this, and you can, you know, we all know critical hits are a pain, but they are a bane in this game, given that normally only the first critical is turned. This actually makes it that two crits get turned for five points. That's pretty cheap and pretty powerful. Okay, H9 turbo lasers. I think these were in the uh, core set. Like I said, it's been a, been a few, it's actually been probably about a month since I've played. Okay, so while attacking, you may change one of your die uh, face with a hit or a crit to a face with an accuracy icon, which is pretty good because you can actually negate the uh, your opponent's ability to cancel out dice. So now we're actually looking at the defensive retrofit stuff. Um, we've got the electronic countermeasures. When defending, you may exhaust this card to spend one defense token that your opponent had targeted with an accuracy result. So again, pretty good. Um, seven points. Sorry, guys, I didn't cover the points. Um, I'll come back to this in a second. Um, this is pretty good. You know, if somebody thinks, ha, 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 you're not going to redirect or, you you know, you're not going to evade and blah, 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 blah. Suck it, you know. I've got defensive countermeasures, electronic countermeasures, unfortunately. Um, point cost, sorry, for the XX9 turbo lasers is five, and for the H9 turbo lasers, it's eight. Okay, so now we're gonna see our offensive retrofit. Actually, this, 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 while we're on defensive, let's just quickly, like I said, these all fell out of my hand earlier, and I want to make sure, yeah, there we go. Advanced projectors, keeping with the uh, defensive retrofit. 
six points. Uh, when you resolve a token effect, which I think is the redirect. Um, sorry, guys, uh, if I've got that wrong, I do apologize. Like I said, I haven't played for a while and I'm being pretty lazy about, without putting the the book out. Uh, you can choose more than one whole zone to suffer damage, which may include non-adjacent whole zones. Whole zones. Again, that's quite good because obviously it's always the uh, adjacent ones. But this ability allows you to say, uh -uh, "I want you to uh, the site that you've now suddenly turned to be protecting." Whilst you build up your shields again through engineering points, I'm going to hit that one and hit it hard. Okay, let's look at the weapons teams. Let's sort my cards out. This is really bad. Isn't it? Teams. Oh, no, there's another one. Yeah, there they are. Okay, gunnery team. We've seen that. Uh, seven points. We've seen this in the core set. You can attack the same hull zone more than once per activation. That hull zone cannot target the same ship or squadron more than once during the activation. Okay, so it's great if you've got a couple of ships to the side or in the front arc that you want to take two shots at. That's what you want to use. Nice seven points. Sensor team, while attacking, you may exhaust this card and spend one die to change one of your dice to a face icon with an accuracy token. Again, it's uh, it's another ability to, you know, take out your opponent's um, capabilities of stopping your attacks, really. Coming in at five points. So, let's have a look. We've only got a few left here. So the offensive retrofit, which is a point defense reroute. While attacking a squadron at close range, you may reroll your critical icons. That's great because normally it's only hit icons that actually have an effect. So this allows you to have a bit, do a bit more damage, and that's uh, five points. That's actually quite a nice card to, to take along. Okay. Now we've got, we've got another officer which is the weapon liaison. I think this is, a, again, available in the core set. Before you reveal a command, you may spend one command token to change that command to a concentrate fire or a squadron order. Yeah, that's definitely in the core set. Oh, look, another turbo laser. Again, like I said, they all fell over. So this is an enhanced armament modification. The battery armaments on your left and right hull zones are increased by one red dice. Now this is quite good because let's say, well it doesn't actually matter because we, we know that the uh, port and starboard or left and right are, so that means you're going to be firing one blue, four red. That's a lot. Ten points probably well worth spending. And then lastly we have our two ship title cards. We have the Gallant Haven. Before a friendly squadron at distance one suffers damage from an attack, reduce the total of damage by one. This is quite nice, obviously, if you've got a fighter escort uh, flying alongside. It's a nice way of negating some of their damage and keeping them alive a little longer. Eight points for that fellow. And the other title, Paragon. While attacking a ship you've already attacked this round, add one black dice to your attack pool. Very powerful if you are... Uh, if you've got squads, you know, if you've already attacked a ship um, through a squadron order, or let's say you've got another assault frigate and you're laying down fire. Let's say you have Gallant Haven and, and then the Paragon. You know, Gallant Haven opens fire and then Paragon fires back and you get to add a blooming black dice to your pool. This is quite nice. Or like I said, if a squadron order's gone off and you know you've done some damage at close range with some squads, or a corvette on the Nebulon Beast taking a pop shot, you you get this guy in, you're gonna do some damage. So there we go, guys. Uh, at long last, we have a ship that could potentially can do some serious damage to uh, the Imperial Navy. So thanks very much for watching. Um, putting up with me waffling away um, as always comments feedback suggestions are always welcomed um, subscribe to the channel keep an eye on us uh, we're going to be doing a lot more bits and pieces we've got a nebulum b and corvette um, unboxing well, it's not going to be an unboxing because i would have already unboxed them uh, because i'm like a child and i want to get to my toys very very quickly uh, so it's going to be an overview again of those, um, and either it might be next week or the week after we'll be looking at the Imperial Forces, but I wanted to get the uh, 
the rebel force is well underway because they are going to be tested in battle very very soon so again guys thanks very much for uh taking some time to watch this and please give us your comments and feedback cheers bye